In that case, then, I'll start recording. So it's Brother David with No Nonsense Christianity and Brother James again, who wants to say what James wants to say. Who knows what he will say next? Over to you, James. <laughs> yeah, if Interpol kick the door in, um, sorry to make it brief. <laughs> um, if anybody is monitoring me right now, I'm peaceable and amenable with all men, no? Um but no, seriously, uh, I just wanted to just, just touch on a few things. I did want to look, make a long, comprehensive video of lots of scripture today, but it's just been a real hectic day. And I just thought, you know, last minute thing, I'm really tired, but there's a couple of things I wanted to get off my chest and help people at the minute with understanding. Um, and just to summarize, my final thoughts on this Um situation that's gone on in the, in the in IFB world and everything and again guys I will definitely uh brother David and I will be doing a comprehensive overview at some point um but what one of the things I want to want to touch on is um a lot of the backlash that's been coming at the minute and um and from somebody called Andrew Loza and I don't know this guy. Um, I believe he's out um, in New York area. Um, and all I would say is this is uh, some of the videos you've been putting out looks like real trash. Um, but that's not to necessarily say what he's saying is wrong. There's a lot of parody in there and stuff, which I'm all for uh, sometimes. But all I would say is this. I'd be very suspicious of like, literally within uh, a couple of days of completely making all these videos and running to um people like um gently led heretics like tommy mcmurtry um because i say that like this i don't particularly think on the first on the surface of it that tommy mcmurtry is necessarily a bad guy but the reason why i say that is that uh, this kool-aid thing he's doing at the moment um and kind of like distancing himself like look we always suspected he was the weasley type which is why some people never got on with him from back in the days um and like say what you like it's spade the andersonites are called a spade a spade and i was also aware like about how he was kind of careful i would say certain things and that but like the reason why i'm calling him out for is one and just on one particular area, because you have to be fair is fair. There's nothing else I've really heard, but it's so egregious that why I'm calling him out is because I could go on and on about Phygelus, Homogenes, Hylitus, many, many others. But he said that um, that he thinks um, uh, Pastor Keith Gomez and... Um, Stacy Shiflet and men of God. Well, the Bible says that, like, you know, uh, the false prophet is going to deceive people with great swelling words. Now, these two pastors, if nobody knows who they are, teach works based salvation, the very opposite of what we speak against. Jesus told us it's faith alone without works. These people preach hardcore conditional security. Now, the Bible says um, in Amos 3.3, 3, which uh, Brother David will pull up, can two walk together except they be agreed? You know, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 16.17, be separate and come out from among them. Now, so think of it this way. The, the, let's say, Let's say uh, atomic mergers, I was like this. I've spoke to these men. I don't know what they think of me. But, you know, because the sincere. Yeah, the devil is pretty sincere. The Jehovah's Witness and the Mormon I encountered earlier on today were very sincere, Tom and Mergery. But just because I they have kind of vouched for them doesn't mean to say that, oh, well, that's OK, because they're just teaching works. You know, that's just like saying, well, like. The so-called great men of God today, like uh, Benny Sin and uh, Kenneth the Snake Copeland and uh, Mr. Joyce Mayer, these men of God, like that doesn't mean to say that, oh, well, they're very sincere. 
you know, I mean, that's very hard with Joyce Ray, of course, with those pucker joker face lips and so on. But um, what, what, what I'm getting at is they're all talking, obviously works in one way or another. And obviously, the, the you know, um, I go to Deuteronomy 1820, but the prophet, which will presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. So we have to be very careful when we're uh, recommending somebody, um, particularly as a pastor, because like that's not to say that you can't learn some historical knowledge of people like Gomez or um, you know how to tie your garden up or <laughs> or what or whatever it is. No one's saying that, of course. But what I am bringing uh, to attention is that just because um somebody thinks somebody's okay to actually publicly say that that person's okay when they're an unsaved spiritual reprobate for sure just by the words they've said by every word you should be condemned meaning that if your speaker works and you've been told about this over and over and over again and you hold that position to a works-based salvation that's the worst thing in the bible i don't think i've ever touched on this I may have mentioned it once before, but like obviously every unbeliever, as we would all know, goes to hell. But maybe there's some of you out there don't know there's a part of the Bible that says out of darkness. That's reserved for the false prophet because that's a step beyond unbelieving because you willingly and knowingly turn God's word into a lie. And like the equivalent of teaching for filthy Lucas sake or whatever it is, you've turned our glorious gospel, God's glorious gospel into a lie. So when you're telling people you've got to work the way to heaven, you, you know, that's power and death in the tongue. The death meaning that, like, you've, you know, uh, crossed land and sea to make one twofold more proselyte the child of hell. Like, people who are, who are already confused and now do, double treble confused, and you're telling them to, to um, uh, you know, work your way to heaven. And by the way, I, you know, we're all capable of mistakes. I've got one right now because, all right, I'm tired. Uh, <laughs> but there's, I see, see in a lot of people's algorithms at the minute, this punk from Australia at the minute, one of those um, simps that's come out of the, um, the, 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 the charismaniac movement and now has suddenly read the word of God is like, hey, guys, hey, it's not about works, but, you know, if you really are saved, this is going to happen in your life and this and that. No, you fool. Get the ground to swallow you quickly. Like, you know, so uh, I try to have a degree of grace in the context of um, he might be a new believer. I don't know that. I can only go off what's being presented, right? But, like, I get an inkling. It could be, like, say, speaking of Benny Sin, uh, his his nephew, um, Costasin, it's, it's Costa, isn't it, right? And then what I want to touch on is this, if you think about what I was saying about Tom McMurtry, clearly, if we just go by what Tom McMurtry says, I believe he's saved, you know, just because he's a bit of a simp and gently led, you know, to try not to hold that against him, right? Um, you know, you can just imagine his wife smacking his hand off the mic, can't you, right? Um you know, uh, I digress, I apologize. But what I'm getting at is that, like, um, these, how would you say, like, say when Costa Hin came out of the the charismaniac movement, and, and you have to give credit where credit's due. Thank God God opened his eyes to that, right? Massive respect, because we can't just bash people. We have to say when things are right as well. You know, just like how if I get something wrong, then I was just getting something right. Um, but what I'm getting at is he's gone, the devil with the reeds is pulled him out of that fire and gone straight away and went, ah, uh, let's come in the reformed movement. You know, because his whole life hasn't been necessarily been in hardcore works, but it's been in something which we've called Lordship Salvation, which I know a lot of you will understand, right? So that's going to naturally appeal in his flesh to go, huh, this isn't the clown show that I'm used to, the high five in the Starbucks and the gold glitter falling from the ceiling. 
two dollar gold glitter falling from the ceiling angel dust so but these guys kind of like uh talking the word of god here but i i see that we still gotta somehow work for this or produce something in our lives so that's naturally gonna appeal right and obviously god's not a respected person i hope costa hin repents of this and i hope like in his search for God, that he's going to find, like, people are going to tell him and say, hey, I hope this finds him. Hey, you know, the Bible makes it very clear. It's either all works or it's all faith. It's not one or the other. And so we all know it. it, it it's just faith, obviously. But, like, I think people... um some people can get confused on this obviously um and but but what i want to what i want to uh, make the distinction is is there's a lot of people who may get confused or regurgitate something whereas the likes of known works based false prophets like stacy shiflet and many many others keith gomez <laughs> keith gomez okay knowing and saying it with compulsion hey you better have a produced life and this isn't that and that and here's the thing these people are not innocent these people are not ignorant it's not like say somebody like um you know what's that bozo called from it has the water pistol um in the charismaniac movement um Oh, I also forget his name. Uh, comes on on a skateboard, and that. obviously that could be many people, right? Um, but uh, yeah, it's not like them where they've, they've you know they've read half a NIV one time in life, right, or something. These people have studied in the Word of God and have chose to willingly ignore and teach a false gospel. So, like. Again, obviously, another derivative of that, some people are just teaching for money. Uh, again, I'm not accusing anybody of that because I don't know them. But what I am saying is you are studied enough to go, hey, even though the Bible says hundreds of times, believe only, you know, even though we have a thesis to eight and nine, even though we have, it's very clear that we can't work our way to heaven. Yeah, I'm going to teach it's going to be works. So, you know, like let let the ground swallow them up quickly you know um and i don't say that lightly but that obviously is in the bible because imagine imagine if and it's quite quite simple like this for anybody listening imagine stacy shiflet knocks at your door you know and says that dumb thing like um you know rare discomfort hey i'm gonna pray a prayer with you and i want you to get saved but first you've got to clean up your life you got to repent of all these sins. Like, you know, that's how serious it is that, like, when these people are saying these things, like, God takes that very, very seriously. You know, like, I know I'm quite the jovial type and I'm quite easygoing and, you know, obviously, but I'm very serious about God's word. And and the first thing I need to, to say is, like, I, I fall just, just like everybody else. And everybody, everybody who's listened to me, me included, we all fall in areas. We all need daily sanctification. You know, devil's going to attack us 24-7, right? But the one thing about saved people is that we know it's by faith alone. And so all that to say, this is just in all the chaos that's going around at the moment, just because somebody speaks very calm and almost monotone and you know they don't seem like a threat you know um you know somebody like mcmurtry probably couldn't punch his way out the paper bag what i'm getting at is like the 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 subtle words that like are in there that people may just think oh well that's okay maybe i should go out and check uh keith gomez's message now or maybe he's who've like some unsafe per people who are seeking out God have just maybe caught that message about, oh, Jim Jones. 
he's other taste this thing called Kool-Aid. I'll go and have a look at that because I've been thinking about God. Oh, 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 well, he's he's recommended Keith Jones and he's recommended this, that, and the other. And like I say, I just want to point that out and beloved behold, test the spurts to see if they've got. Now, again, I think Tom McMurtry saved. You know, he's not my cup of tea. Do I think he's the worst bloke in the world? Definitely not. You know, I, uh, and I will say this, I've had other 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 preachers and pastors who I personally know who will vouch for him. They're not his biggest fan, but, but they'll vouch for him, right? But again, it comes back to not being respected persons, particularly um, it's so serious with recommending a, a, a false prophet. I, I can't begin to tell you how serious that is. And when questioned on this, Tommy McMurtry laughs it off like it's no big deal. You know, um, he needs to get right and make a video and apologize for that. But because he's one of these kind of unassuming types, he doesn't come across super prideful. And so, but it's very, he, he, in that moment, he is ever being very prideful because you need to get that right, Tommy McMurtry, and say, hey, I shouldn't have recommended these people. Now, I get he's trying to say, well, the Anderson Knights have accused this, and for good reason. They've accused you of that, you know, like, look, I get that it's a crazy show with a lot of these uh, people in there. And by the way, uh, just while I'm on here now, something I almost forgot about just to not changing total attack, but I just wanted to mention uh, Chris Segura, like, look, if you're going to name your child after a pastor, that's probably not a good idea because it's, it's better to trust God rather than men. And like, all right, um, John was in a position to, to um, no, which one, which was one of the kids, there's so many kids, which one was, it was Isaac, I can't remember the, um, who said he wore sunglasses indoors <laughs> and, and, and gloves oh, indoors. Yeah, I, said it. I can't remember if it was yeah, Solomon or Isaac, right. but yeah. I think it might have been Isaac. Like the sort of and like then, the secret presidents like protection, aren't they? <laughs> it was a bit creepy. I, just like oh, just you know that's why God specifically put it in there. It's better to trust um, God rather than men, and we should never lift up men just by de facto. Um, and there are so many bad pastors because of the timeline we're in and and you know this has to be a great fact of there has to be a factor obviously with the great fall in the way um and the lack of genuine biblical preaching around the world and let me say this me included we're not going to get everything right all the time you know um classic example would be let's say say Jonathan Shelley might be saved, right? If I see Jonathan Shelley in heaven, like, amen, that'd be amazing, right? You know, the people but keep I only me off in the comments because you think otherwise. Yeah, exactly right. Um, oh, what's that guy called? Reprobate Slayer. One of them, yeah, in there. Um, like, you know, I mean, to be fair, I've watched the guy some of his comments. We won't ban him just yet, but <laughs> for. for but some of them are okay. Um, but uh, I have actually commented on a, on a couple of guys' things because I know sometimes on the, on the last video uh, there's people asking questions and when I get a spare minute, I'll, I'll try and answer things because um, obviously until I get my own channel, um, I, I try to be there for everybody and I, I want to give people an answer because... Um, obviously, I've never shared a lot of my testimony, but one of the one of the just to briefly touch on this, one of um, my things was when I buried, when I took myself away like a Berean and, and studied and locked, literally locked the door behind closed doors. Brother David will attest to this, uh, and I was so grieved by the fact I had been let down by the charismatic movement and I didn't know anything that like. I know how much it means to people to, to want an answer. It's an innate human desire, but particularly on the most important thing that's ever going to happen in our lives is, is knowing a biblical answer. And so like, 
that means more to me than anything else. So when I see comments of people who've genuinely asked about something, then I'll I will I'll I'll, I'll, I'll ch I always ch check the videos to to try and get round to them. Um, but um, if anybody, oh, by the way, just while I'm speaking here, if anybody has a suggestion for a YouTube channel name, definitely comment below because at the minute I'm thinking James Talks, but then like I may want like a secular channel aside from like obviously speaking about this. I think James uh, Talks is like more of a name of a video series rather than a channel. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Um, so, um, I don't know. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely open that up to the floor and stuff. Um, but, um, yeah, um, I guess it's time to ask brother David, if he's got any questions that he wants to ask me. Oh, and I was, I was thinking earlier in that, I mean, they weren't really, I wasn't really thinking of questions from some of the stuff he said. They were just sure, a on my on floor said, or right? something. So, like, uh, you know, you pointed out, like, the whole thing with Costi Hin and going uh -huh. to the whole sort of reform thing. It seems like yeah. that's quite a big thing, actually, is that people have come out of, like, the charismatic movement or they've come mm -hmm. against, like, Bethel and they're quite well known for going against those types of guys. But they're very, very heavy on reformed and Calvinism or to maybe a lesser extent, like, Lutherism. Uh, so you've got, like, Melissa, whatever her name is, and, like, Doreen Virtue, and you've got, like, Standing for Truth and um, what are the like? Uh, I'm just trying to remember all the names that I were like the messed up church and all. There's like lots of these channels where they do a lot of work to come against those sort of things, but they, yeah, it's very much still sort of Calvinist and so there's a lot of lip service about gospel and useful Christ, idiots. But it, yeah, it is still <laughs> kind of yeah. It's still like the, the works are in there, aren't they? But that, yeah, that was yeah. the only thing I was going to kind of compliment to that, but. Um, yeah, yeah. Not, not much from me really I mean, it was your idea for this so yeah um no i did like i say i wanted to do like something much more extensive but it's been a a really long tiring day and um i got a little bit sunstroked earlier so um i just kind of like didn't want to like you know me i like I'm I'm out there knocking the, on the me eighth hour <laughs> doors, you know. I really I really go hard when I'm working, but I just today I kind of I wanted to just briefly get those things off my chest while I remembered because I didn't want them to um, go away because it's probably going to be at least another week before um, um, before. Uh, we potentially make another video. Um, to be fair, and... I've been producing most of my content lately because I've been so busy with work in university, I just haven't had time well... to make anything. If I have it, I've been working on the documentary. I have just been publishing a bit, like uploading a video <laughs> while this interview is going off. So I did mention, you know, actually, pigeons playing repentance chess. So you've got a brief mention in there. Uh, you're Repent not a pigeon, by chess, the way. Yeah. But, yeah, it's, you know, that's, yeah, but, uh, yeah you're, prov you're providing a lot of my content lately, so... Yeah, I can just imagine them all on the spiritual dartboard. In red, Jim. In red for eternal life. Yeah. Have I done enough? <laughs> Ooh, it's black. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, if anybody who was listening away from Britain, we had a game show called... Um, what was it called again? Oh, uh, Bullseye. Oh, no, I've not heard More of that. like BS. Um, but an 80s show, um, and uh, you could win like roller cola bottles of roller cola and speed boats and things like that. Um, perfect for people in England. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I um, I just wanted to mention them, but uh, yeah, look, th there's there's definitely, I'm thinking, uh, brother David being the, the great graphics man that he is. Maybe you should have like a, a notepad in the corner and like the tick boxes of like a, a standard A4 piece, yellow piece of paper and the like uh, the tick boxes of the things to do. So NIFB overview is one. Right. Absolutely. Um, one, I'm going to drop it like it's hot right now. Um, a lot of people, particularly who may watch this channel, obviously are going to be confused about Spurgeon. And there's an amazing, amazing um, 
uh, uh, <clears throat> I won't say channel, but like a uh, Facebook page, right? Facebook page yeah. out there, right? Yeah. Uh, called Charles, Charles Spurgeon Uncentered, right? Yeah. And I'll it's something in the video uh, description to that, actually. Yes, yes. The, the, where one of the things I talk about a lot off camera is uh, Freemasonry in the church. Right, uh, which which brother David will testify to, and that's something I definitely want to do at some point. And one of the key figures in this that spearheaded this is Charles Spurgeon. Um, so I've got hundreds, you know, there'll be hundreds of clips, you know, like just like for anybody who's ever seen um, the other brother that commented on here. You know about explains what the one eye club is and all the rest of it, yeah, right? Because that was the interview I did with Brother Steve, and he yeah. came to me asking to talk about the Freemasons, but he yeah. didn't. He didn't know that much about Charles Spurgeon, though. So, yes, yeah, it's good if you can sort of clarify. With yeah, you yeah, can fill a gap around. there. That, that's definitely one. Um, yeah, I, I want to talk about um, uh, about church settings where. A lot of people who probably watch this channel don't go to church, and in a lot of cases, quite rightly so. Um, so, I want to talk about a particular aspect of like bricks and mortar versus like people who meet up and Christians meet up in a in a in a local assembly, but not necessarily bricks and mortar. Um, so you know something like titled i guess like is church a physical building or whatever something like that um because don't get me wrong um not to give the game away now but like you know there are things like a coffee clutch uh, <laughs> which which are totally wrong uh but like if that's not this to say that people don't have to physically meet in the building um because like Give, give you a classic example of this. Um, I was speaking to a very dear friend of mine the other day, and um, he was, like, um, saying that, like, you know, where does this thing come from with Baptists wearing suits? <laughs> right? This is traditions of men. And I'm like, do you know, I couldn't defend that at all because I, I totally agree with him. Now, do I like to wear a suit? Yes. Do I like to go to a church wear in a suit? Yes, because I'm about my father's business. But just because somebody ain't wearing a suit doesn't mean that like I want to judge them off their outward appearance. I want to know inwardly how much Bible they know and what they're going to tell me, right? So yes, it's nice to be nice. It's nice to be smart. Uh, but like as my very close brother is uh, not always dressed as as well as some other people, shall we say, tongue-in-cheek. Um, I dress like it's laundry day. Most of my clothes have holes <laughs> in them. So. In fact, are you in laundry now? No, it's just... To me, it's just there to cover my nakedness. That's all it's there for. <laughs> um, just joshing, of course. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, so that's, that's an area uh, I definitely want to look into. Um, and I guess um, over time, I think... Uh, again, we could go on and on about these, but just while I'm thinking of them now, quick fire thinking now, um, I guess um, your questions answered is a thing or like a sandbox of like, um, what do you want me to talk about? Uh, what, you know, do you want me to give my opinion on the flat earth? Um, do you want me to give you my opinion on um, the Knights Templar or whatever it is. Um, I, I suppose and... like to give, to give the viewers a bit of context behind this, because obviously, I mean, I, I've featured you a fair bit, but they, they probably still don't know that much about you, I guess. Okay. Like, the content I do, I can't just get up and talk like you can. So I have to plan things. I have to plan my videos. I have to do the slides. And I can't describe to people how long it can take me to do one video, which is why I don't release a lot of content on my channel. Mm. So at least because you can just, I, we can just give you a topic and you can just talk for England about a topic and you don't even work from it. You can't work from a script, but you can just talk about it. <laughs> so it, like that would be good for viewers to like ask stuff and then you can just like churn it out and we can just get that stuff out there. And you can yeah, talk about topics um, I just haven't got time to cover. Yeah. Uh, do you know, Actually, when I did that 
preach in Florida. I actually prepared a little bit for that, by the way. <laughs> so nervous because I had notes and I'd never ever had notes before. I don't I sorry, tell a lie. The only time I ever had notes was once when I when I preached for uh, in the charismatic days and we did church outside in the park and all the church came out and um I was preaching outside and I, I actually had the notes in my hand with the Bible in this hand. Um, so that, that was interesting. Um, but it's not that I'm against notes. I, I think notes are a great thing for 99% of people, but just for me, um, but let's it's a mindset say, thing though, isn't it? Like you can't work from notes and scripts, whereas I can't work no, without them. I can't just no. get up and talk like you can. I think everybody's mind is different. And yeah. Like, yeah. Different like, gifts. like, um, like I always say, this is like, um, like I didn't, you know, I, I don't know, God, God blessed me in this way, but obviously I didn't get blessing in the other way. Um, and like, I think that, um, I, I, I guess I always just draw inspiration from scripture. Like I, I always, t t one of the first scriptures that like, really took it home to me was like when it said be instant in season now the season ready to give an answer on all occasions and the, the word richly dwells in me so like i i i like the idea of like to to, to be filled to, to to be able to explain to people on the spot um because um like i I had a neurological issue when I was a, I was a kid. Like I, I was the umbilical cord. Satan tried to take me out on day one, um, and I always found it difficult. Why, like when I was at university or whatever I was, or even just a workplace, and like you know, sometimes I'm like I can't concentrate properly or whatever, and I'd have to do things spontaneously rather than just sitting there. And you know, like people open packets of chips, and I'm like, I want to flip the table off, <laughs> you know, like just like you know. Um, so I guess I've got a variant of ADHD, folks, <laughs> you know. Um, so uh, not I'm after man made titles, but yeah, ADHD. Um, so uh, actually, there's a great one, there's a great one for um. An idea in the, in the, in the on the A four piece of paper. Um, we'll think of some great acronym, or if anybody wants to think of an acronym for it. Um, but uh, yeah, no. I... About um, LSD, Lordship Spectrum Disorder, <laughs> not <another> LSD. <laughs> <laughs> but you maybe have to be on LSD to, to get that yeah. Lordship. <laughs> Yeah, the, the prescription is the King James Bible twice a day. Smack them over the head with it. That's my, yeah. that's my treatment. <laughs> Tie them to yeah. Them beat them. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, no, there's, there's, there's definitely a lot of things. Um, and I, I won't reveal it now. Um, but what I would say is, is um, I going on a... I can't give the specifics, but I'm going on a, a big ministry trip um, in uh, four weeks' time. Um, so, um, uh, you know, if, any, if uh, anybody wants to uh, pray for me on that one, um, you know, uh, very much appreciated. Um, yeah, so any help is very welcome. Um, want to know where you're going in case they want to meet up with you uh yes i'll be in um the united states for a while and then canada but i don't know my exact um movement yet, specific but, yeah because i've got so many people to see in so many places and church to visit and so on um so yeah i can definitely if anybody wants to meet up um and um yeah, uh, that'd be very much helpful. Um, you know, if anybody wants to donate anything, that would be brilliant because it all goes towards travel specifically, as Brother David can testify to. Um, that'd be very, very welcome. Um, quite simply, just because, like David just said, there's so many places I have to go to, and I have to go to Canada as well when I finish my uh, trip in, in, in the United States. 
Um, so, um, yeah, uh, that's just that for that specific reason. And it's not like um, where everybody's like next to each other neither. It's like there's a lot of people spread out. I, I have to like, I have to go to Miami. Well, lots of places in Florida. Uh, friends have to go to Georgia. Uh, may have to go to North Carolina. Uh, may have to go to Bend in Oregon. Um, this is just off the top of my head now. Um, obviously, it's hard, definitely it's hard for a lot of Europeans to grasp like how big North America is. I mean, <laughs> yeah, sorry, the, yeah, the yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's one country and it's the size of a continent. You know, and I think <laughs> yeah. like people just don't grasp that. Um, you know, yeah, like, well, why would um, you go to America when they've got X problem and you haven't got that in Britain? Because America is the size of a whole continent. If you compare America <laughs> to Europe, we have exactly the same problems. Yeah, to give people an like, a logistical Massive. idea as well is. So let's say when I and I've done this obviously a couple of times, uh, which I don't recommend for the faint of heart. I don't get me wrong, I'd love to get a box where you can sleep on the train, but this, they're always booked out. So to go in coach, it's really hard. But say, for example, to go to and bear in mind, this is on the same coast on the east coast. If you go from Florida to Miami, and I'm talking the closest bit coming down in order from New York. That's in one journey, in one, you're talking minimum 24 hours on a train, you know? So, um, and if I guess for people who don't know as well, I, I, I can't fly just to uh, a medical, a couple of medical conditions I have. Um, so um, basically, yeah, it, it's I have to take the train. Um, so, I mean, don't get me wrong. Sometimes Pete, I can be blessed with um, people let, uh, getting me a vehicle or borrowing a car or, or whatever it is. But most of the time it is I haven't used Amtrak train. Um, so, um, yeah. Uh, so any help is, is, like I say, is very, very welcome um, to donate into Brother David. I mean, I think um, I just, to, to comment on that is that I make a very deliberate point of not asking for money on my channel. Um, I don't even collect donations privately, so if that's something people wanted to do, they'd have to email me with the email on my Yeah, 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 yeah. sorry, I forgot about that, yeah. And then it's kind of like, um, straight to you and it goes around me, because I don't, I have yeah, yeah, collecting no, money off people, because I don't. So. Yeah, yeah, no, that, that, that would be brilliant. Um, and also, as well as a good idea is, is all the places um, that I've got to go see. I guess I could like take photos or some of them, and you could share them on the share them on the page to show where I've been um, and all those kind of things. Maybe do those um, as, like, community posts or something. I mean, I might have yeah, to make it, it square. Like I might have to cut off some of the edges, but it has to be <laughs> yeah. square for some particular reason. Um, but, yeah, community posts. And also, here's another one I've just thought of right now on my travels as well. Um, if there's anybody that wants me to check out a certain church, <laughs> uh, to go in, um, Careful, not so people much. have you going to go exactly like, at the worst places just to see yeah. what you'll do. <laughs> yeah, they're all going to send me to Hillsong, aren't they? Also, <laughs> I think Hillsong's in Australia, though, isn't it? You'll probably be. Oh Australia. no, no, yeah. the, the, the the big oh, one, the big Carl Lentz in, the world, in New York yeah, of City. Will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, no, um, no. So any any ideas like that is very welcome as well. Um, but um, so if we can get you yeah, into the Mormon um, Temple in Utah, <laughs> yes, <laughs> actually, actually, doing. I can share this today. Um, while I was out hiking in the fields um, on my way at the gym, uh, I live between two small villages where I am at the moment, and I have to like hike, like as in take like big hiking boots, trail boots in my bag because it's really muddy, right? And um, I seen this guy, sorry, I heard this guy shout for me in the middle of nowhere, just me and this guy. And he was like, hey, um, can you tell where I'm going? And I pointed him to where he needed to go to the next village down. And um, anyway, I had to stop and, and, and um, make a couple of adjustments to my bag and my hiking kit and stuff. And so I was a little ways behind him. And, and anyway, I caught up with him right at the periphery of where I'd pointed him to. And um, 
I basically spoke to him and um, I couldn't, he wanted to talk, but I couldn't get the full gospel presentation out, but I nearly as, as good as got it out. Um, but he kept asking me questions because this guy had married a Mormon and he got married in a Mormon temple. But rather than taking offense, when I called out the Mormons, he said, I'm so glad we had this conversation today um, because it was like basically really insightful for him. He's probably and, realized on top of that how bad it is. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, and, and the thing is, me being me, I hadn't even touched on the Starbase collab, you know, the Death Star. Like, I hadn't touched on nothing like that, right? I was actually being serious, right? <laughs> obviously. So, so yeah. So, I guess I just want to say that, like, it's, um, like, uh, Brother David can testify this. Away from camera, I'm always, always speaking, abounding all day long, speaking the word of God. <laughs> Well, because, get this, folks, I am imperfect. There are going to be some times where I do actually go quiet and forget or something's happened and I can't do it or whatever. I think, I think but, you would put most of us to shame, though, to be fair. It certainly put me to shame. I can testify to that. But I, I do I do, um, I do, do genuinely where I can want, want to preach to people. And obviously, close out with this, where we are at the moment with Halloween, you know, um, I hate that holiday so much. Like, if there's just one holiday out of all of them that could be scrapped, it'd be that one. Well, if you're Bill McGregor, it's no biggie. Let's <laughs> yeah. just join in with the celebrations. Yeah. Let's get our costumes out. And everything. I, I am. I am thankful that like it's not anywhere near as big in this country as it is in the states. Like, <laughs> and it used to be like you'd get all these kids knocking on random doors, whereas you just don't get them anymore. It seems like they always arrange where they're gonna go, so you don't you mm. don't get bothered by them so much. But it's still like all the horrible stuff, like all the you know scary stuff that's been sort of made sort of fun of them. yeah oh yeah like i say I obviously spending half my time between uh, obviously the other side of the world and here like obviously i say at home we would like add the ideal thing is just to have a pile of tracts with candies in as well and, and like kind of like putting the tract with the candy right whereas in england you're right like when i'm visit here there's, there's you know, give candy to kids who get some strange looks. <laughs> no, yeah, I, you point, just wouldn't do it here. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, no. I mean, we have a we have a big trap at the door. But but the thing is, like like what Brother David just said there. Like I've noticed when I when I visited England and that like the it seems to be less and less and it's more of like an organized thing right it is getting less i think it's kind of kind of getting to the point i don't know if it's just because british people just can't be bothered with it or we don't care about it as much as they do in the states or like because it used to be when i was a kid a lot of children would do the doors now it just seems like they arrange where they're going to go mm. and you might get the odd house where they decorated it with scary decorators like somebody'll put spider webs but it's not like everybody's doing it and nobody's trying to sort of show off so we don't make a big thing of it maybe it's just because it's so close to guy fawkes day and you wouldn't have that in the over in north america maybe but that, you know maybe it's that i don't know but it's like it's kind of it's one of those things it's there but we don't make anywhere near as big of a deal about it as like say christmas or something which i am glad about because i hate it. i hate halloween so much but it's still there, <laughs> yeah and, and you still have that feeling that like uh the, there's more crime and more danger on that day because like, I was coming home from the tram yesterday at the evening, and a lot of people are going out drunk and going out drinking, and you know, going out to see crashing five police cars yeah, where we and, were, you know, police women, helicopter out all night, women addressing tarty, and you know, all that stuff. It, yeah, it's still not very nice. It's still not a nice. No, evening. gosh, no. Um, and and for anybody new to Christianity, listen at the minute. Um, basically, you know, essentially in a nutshell. For all the Satanists, uh, and this is surface level Satanism. The real Satanism is the stuff we can't see, right? Uh, which is like um, a lot of people higher up. And again, that's definitely one we're going to touch on down the line. But surface level Satanism, hello, simply means holy. So that's the devil's, um, I guess, 
his special day, right? So, but people think it's just a bit of fun and this and that. And look, I absolutely do not watch Supernatural. It, even just thinking about it now makes me shudder. Like, set thine eye before no evil thing. Now, does that mean to say I've ever watched a thriller movie or a slasher movie or something like that, which I shouldn't have done? Absolutely. But what I'm getting at is, like, I am certainly not going to make a public profession of buying all this junk and being actively and openly involved in that, right? Um, and, like, it's it's just a sign of the eschatological times that we're in uh, that, like, there's no word of God, but yet we can just just buy the you know i can go to the local walmart and, and buy all the halloween crap i want and yet and yes there are bible there are bibles it's, still it's there but guess what that it's crap it, yeah absolutely guess what all the bibles are, are like the the billy balaam uh teaching edition or or whatever it is and you know the the entirely secular version or the entirely satanic version not or whatever. inspired version <laughs> not <having> translation <laughs> Um, yeah, and oh, there's another one. Pin that one right in there. Bible versions. And I'm kind of, I have got a series to start talking about that, but it's just, it's a lot of prep work to discuss that topic because it's a very complicated topic. Maybe not when you're dealing with translation, but when you're dealing <laughs> yeah. with like the Greek and the Hebrew, yeah, yeah. And it, it is complicated. I can't. I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Um, I, I know, like, the thing is, I can't explain to my subscribers that the complexity is this, is that I think we just want to look at it and say, it's just so straightforward that it's all TR. And, you know, obviously the anti-TR folk, they just think it's so straightforward that it's not. My personal take, it's just such a messy subject. It, it, whichever way you go about it, it, it's a very complex subject. I can't explain that to people, like, how difficult yeah. it is to have... Well, it's either the living word, I'll put it this way, it's either the living word or to the non-living word. So it's I mean, either dead it or sound, alive. That makes it sound <laughs> simple, but if you try and do the study on it, it is an absolute rabbit hole. Oh, yeah, like, like, look, like, and I'm sure, like, obviously I'll be contributing to all this about giving my take on the majority versus the minority text and so on. And, like, I'm sure Catholic reprobates will probably be mentioned in there and all the rest of it, but... Like, just I get like what everything you're terrible came out of Alexandria. <laughs> <That's the easiest laughs> way Alexandria is a bad place. Well, we did learn the Alexandrian technique for our bodies and how we should sit properly and all well, the ergonomics and yeah. and everything like that, right? So it's not a total write off, but um, yeah, no, seriously, there's like, uh, yeah, there's there's um, the Halloween thing. Um, it's good to see in one way that it's less. Uh, which is good, um, but um, there's mm, um, we're coming up to oh, what's that one next holiday called where we have the big white uh, and red guy? Um, oh yes, Santa. What is Santa backwards? <laughs> right, look, people. There, there's a great one. People might you know in time for Christmas where people might ask about like. Let me say this, folks. The Bible says, let no man, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm going to butcher this because it's a scripture I haven't mentioned for a long, long time. But like, um, you can help me out with this, brother David. Let no, ma let no man esteem one day above another. Yeah, yeah. Right? Uh, I'm paraphrasing, I think, a little bit there. But basically what that's saying is that like, you know, if, uh, when the Bible talks about traditions of men, that's talking about specifically false religion. Okay. There's an now, application to that, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. An application, a subset of that would be what's not false religion would be, let's say, you like to have, like, I like to watch Teddy Tuesdays. If anybody's seen that channel on YouTube, I love that golden retriever, okay? Right? Teddy play, does all these skits. He's just the most lovable dog, right? I'll, I watch that on a Tuesday. That's, a, that's an okay tradition of men. Or taco Tuesdays. I'll have, sometimes have a taco on a Tuesday as well, right? Okay. Crunchy one, fish taco, spring onions, lettuce. Um, I can't remember the rest of the ingredients. Um, but, yeah, um, and birria. Love birria. Uh, but, yeah, so there are okay traditions of men. But the, the Christmas thing where I guess, like, the easiest way to describe this is, like, 
in the end times, it seems like it seems like when the, the Bible talks about um, the great hearts, particularly talking about the Catholic Church. Now, is it specifically just talking about the Catholic Church? Abs you know, Brother Dave would agree, it's absolutely not. However, is it the Catholic Church that may potentially unite everybody? Very likely, very, very likely. You know, it seems to me that way anyway, and a lot of other people. Now, that brings in the door for the New World Order and the One World Religion. Now, is Christmas the equivalent thing that brings in all the other things, like all the dumb, meaningful gifts that people get for Christmas? Um, and I'm not talking about the knitted jumper that Andy might send, because that actually inevitably it might be a good gift if you're in a really cool, cool place right so i'm not i'm not down on gifts but obviously it's just there's going to be certain things that they are not good for you or whatever um and then that leads into other things you know somebody buy somebody like um some kind of gambling device or whatever it is and like then they get in their life a gambling you see where i'm going with that kind of thing so so, yeah, yeah my, uh, my problem with like Christmas, and I guess if I was American, I'd have the same problem with Thanksgiving, is the whole pretense that it's this special religious holiday, but the way that it just messes up with man's psyche. I mean, like if you think about Black Friday and how much people absolutely run each other over to get a cheap, crappy plastic telly, and they're just they're attacking each other, they're absolutely destroying the supermarkets, they're just fighting each other, they're standing on top of each other. You know, it's a miracle people don't get killed. It's like COVID toilet roll, but like every year. It means like, TV you know, folks out there for anybody what, who's what listening. Did I say, did I say television, did I? Telly, yeah. How oh, will they know what that is? That's but, an abbreviation. Yeah, but I just mean like to get, get a bit of a discount on absolute, you know, just just worldly things. And yeah. it's just like even... Just oh, Christmas. gosh, I'm, yeah. I'm not so... I don't get agitated when people have a tree. But I just think like decorations, to me, they're just completely pointless. And it's just like more seasonal for people. It's a bit of plastic. Yeah. I mean, obviously, obviously, you know, the, the Bible, how could we say this, uh, answering it, the, the falls and against. The Bible clearly talks about trees. Yeah, and, and, and they were decorated and really around the temple and stuff. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And, you know, gold and silver. There's, there's a lot of subtle what, references. What I'd say to that, though, is like my take on that is that that's kind of like a permanent decoration. It's always decorated. So, like, if I got some christmas lights for instance i could decorate my garden but then that would be like if they were always there all year round so that my garden always looks nice they weren't just something where they overlaid it with gold for five minutes then teared it all down and then went back and did it another year i think so i think to me that's a very different thing like it, it's something that's meant to look nice for a long time like a lasting joy not just some temporary bit of plastic that we chuck out and then find somewhere in the house to keep hide in a cupboard for months on end that's my yeah. personal take. It's not meant to. Oh attack. no, no, no! Feel I, guilty that's watching this. It's just, just because, uh, like, I think, I think a lot of the, a lot of the people who watch your channel are very um, biblically literate, and so they're gonna know that the Bible specifically talks about scriptures about how the way the trees even dressed and stuff. It's no now, obviously, this in there. Yeah, there's no accident. But obviously, the other side of that is what does Satan do? Like, he's gonna, he's gonna change it for his glory, right? So, like, obviously, you know, it's very clear whether it be the Norse gods or somewhere in Bavaria, allegedly, where they started, that, like, people started worshipping the tree. Now, you could say, well, people worship Christmas indirectly and they don't know. Yeah, that's kind of true. But you know what? Like, there's going to be how many people are saved who celebrate Christmas. I, you know, I'm not against that. I think, actually, Pastor Anderson said that about, like, you know, him and... Yeah, he's offended it. Did they celebrate yeah. Christmas? Look, as long as it, nobody's getting down on all fours and bowing down to the tree, <laughs> yeah. you know, like I'm not, I'm, I'm absolutely not against Christmas. You know, we have some great food, and like every single Christian who's worth the salt out there is going to say, Do you know what, like, what a great time. Yeah. To, to, I think uh, having a meal with the same family, that's a very biblical example of a feast, actually. I think that's a Yeah, eating round the table, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I don't get, like, why Christians are okay to teach their children about Santa Claus as if he's real, though. I, I, I re That really grinds my gears. I know they think it's part <laughs> of the magic. It really grinds my gears, though. 
Uh, yeah, I get it. I get it. And that's the bit where, like, I think, like, you know, you would, you, any Christian that I've ever known who does words and this and that, or whether it's just people even who I've known from a charismatic background who may be saved have gone, like, you know what? Like, we're going to have the trees, we're going to have the presents, we're going to have all the decorations. And I, I don't mind. I really don't mind all that stuff with the odd little caveat, folks, that no matter, this is my real bugbear, and this is you getting to know something right now. No matter where I am in the world, the thing that absolutely pees me off no end is I hear English music in the store wherever I am. <laughs> I, and I really dislike English music. And it's just like, oh, no matter where I am, it's the same song. So when that's on repeat play, sublimely planted all day, with particularly with Christmas. Christmas is on repeat, isn't it? I mean, some of it's in America. Oh. But the thing is, as well, like British people often, like British singers often sing oh. an American accent, though, anyway. But there's a good reason for that, though. Like, can you imagine, like, Adele singing in, a, in an English accent, like, hello from the other side, guy. It's like, it just doesn't work. You'd have to put on an American accent for singing. Yeah. That's just how yeah. it is. Um, yeah, no, but but like I say, the, the, these people I know have said, like, you know, um, hey, we're going to enjoy it all, but just on the point of Santa, you know, it's not that we can not have an image of Santa because obviously he's going to be on wrapping paper probably in, or whatever, but... As long as you explain to people, hey, Santa's not real, um, you know, Saint Nick. Um, uh, you know, I, I don't mind it like used it. colloquially, like if you said to one of your friends, oh, so what did Santa get you for Christmas? Obviously, you know, I think that's just a colloquial. Yeah, of course. Taken literally, of course. But it's just this thing that he, he has turned into like what the Catholic saint is, and it's, you know, that sort of weird obsession with it. Yeah. I mean, look, think of it this way, like, you know, I could probably, I mean, yeah, I'll, I do this all the time. And, and, and again, you can testify this to people watching. Like, I will show you stuff in a movie and point out all the symbology and, and this, that, and the other. And the thing is, you know, sometimes I just wish I couldn't see it sometimes because sometimes I like to just switch it off. I think a classic's like Home Alone, especially Home Alone 2. It is a Christmas like, classic, it has to be said. You know, I've literally been that place and like, and, and, and watched those two guys all. can I, take a lot of punishment. I yeah, know, right? I should put the pictures on there. Like, I've literally stayed there and counted all these things, right? And like, I kind of think, oh, I kind of like the human side. And it's like, you know what? I kind of like that. But like, as long as, as, long as I'm God focused, I, I, I take them things in extra. And I'm like, so what I'm saying is from a time when. I mean, Hollywood's always been Hollywood, but you know what? Like, the less I see it, and and I think like a family kind of orientated movies, like one of my most favorite ones is Plane, Trains, and Automobiles. Regardless of what actors have been up to, I'm just talking about as in like that's something what people it's slapstick humor, you know. Um, it has family values in there, you know. Um, there's none of the walk agenda. You know, we can't fill a certain quarter because these people have to be in or whatever it is, right? So, like, you know, the, am I against that? And I, I, I kind of like that in the sense of, like, where the world was, quote, normal before the last giant psyop of the last four years, which, by the way, um, at some point we will talk about. Um, but, uh, again, that's I that's. I suppose enough. it's kind of like, to me, it's like a... A blessing in disguise, though, because like if we, if Christians are so uptight about whether we should watch movies and whether it's godly, so it's like, well, they release so much crap nowadays, you don't want to watch it anymore, so you just don't. That's what I'm saying. It's 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 like at least I know it's like proof checked, right? It's like a like a how the best way to compare. Like I I have a lot of I have a file right that says NIFB approved sermons, and a lot of them are ticked off from the past. And I'm like, that's absolutely perfect. You know, uh, and like just like how some of the movies are, whatever it is, that is fine. But because there's like what you said, there's a very valid point because there's so much junk that comes out now. I don't even have to worry about like what is actually okay that's coming out now. It's like, you know, um, so yeah. Um, but yeah, the, 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 the food and stuff, like, uh, but what a great time. Like, uh, I was going to originally say at the beginning, it was like, to be able to talk about God to other people and 
because it's probably the one time a year that people who uh not necessarily when you from he's knocked on somebody's door or whatever but even just work colleagues or whatever it is may want to ask you and they know hey i've been sat next to this guy all year i know he's a christian and like I'll just move the sodomite flag out the way while I like go and try and speak to him um, in this PC corporate office. But like, let me just ask you privately, you know, I've been thinking about God, you know, um, could, could you maybe tell me a bit more or whatever it is? And perfect time to present the gospel because it's always going to be used back for God's glory. Right. Um, so, I'm always careful of, about like um, what people say. And in fact, when Pastor Anderson did that preach, I think he's done a couple about Christmas, but particularly that one about the trees and stuff, that was absolutely one of the best uh, sermons I've ever heard in my life because it's such a big subject. I suppose and, it opened uh, me as well to the fact that like you don't always realise that the Bible covers some of these subjects, and yet there's yeah. quite a bit to it, isn't there, when you know where to look? There's a lot to it, yeah. Um, you know, the, the Bible speaks in a lot of different contexts about, like, um, silver and gold. Um, and so the, the, there's a lot of subtle nuances and a lot of, lot of things in there that, you know... Um, um, uh, you know, we, we can take out of it. Um, thank God it was God wrote and not man wrote. <laughs> Otherwise, we would have had a problem. Um, but, um, yeah, no, it, it, it's it's just the best time. I mean, but don't get us wrong. Like, the, the best time of the year to share the Gospels in the sunshine. Um, and uh, there's nothing like a nice, hot, sunny day in... Um, uh you know whether you're knocking on somebody's door whether you're um just walking through the town or yeah even i guess a lot of the people don't know i'm a real big beach guy right so like you know i swim a lot um i was obviously I'm always keeping an eye out for the sharks but like <laughs> um but when i'm at the beach i like uh you know i love I love speaking to people um, about the gospel um, and or wherever I am. Do you know what? I, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but I once had uh, Bill McGregor uh, get angry with me because um, I, was, I was at the gym too much or something. And when he brought that up to me, literally a visitor came in who i met two hours earlier from being at the gym and was speaking about jesus and she'd come to church so you could only imagine that everybody who's watching me and watching bill i'm going hey this person's just come in from the gym and bill's face is like oh i'm so glad james goes to the gym do you know what i mean it's just like i don't go but i'm glad he goes <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you literally a few hours you were having a go at me for going to the gym too much, right? I, yeah, so these pastors in this day and age, man, just like, you know, um, just be worried about, like, your own flock. Uh, obviously, I'm not speaking about Bill, obviously, here, but, like, you know, other other preachers, um, and I see a lot of overreach. It's not a good trait for you. Uh, especially ringing people out of state to try and address them about something or whatever it is. Because um, I know you all watch a lot of this. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, I I think um, uh, I just, I mean, I'm a real sunshine guy, right, as you know. Um, and... oh, I just live in the UK where we don't get any, so... <laughs> <laughs> Still mention the UK just bums me out, like right? yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, um, no, it's 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 a great one, um, and yeah, I tell you, what I've learned being a spend a lot of my life in the fitness industry, and as as a lot of you know, I'm really big in my fitness. I think for me that that like vitamin D, natural vitamin D. Um, I've literally, the rare times that I felt ill, I've literally just stood in the sun for a few hours 
um, obviously in the periods with having the, the right oil on stuff, do you know, because a lot of that sun lotion is cancerous, by the way. So really check what you're putting on your body. But the vitamin D just, I don't know, it's just some of the best natural healing um, God made <laughs> products we can have, right? Because if you think of it, you can't imagine back in the days it's just like, oh, well, let me just go and get my sunblock and my shades and my hat and everything else, right? Um, but, yeah, um, no, I'm thankful for that. Um, yeah, maybe then some health tips could share at some point as well. Like a lot of times I would recommend Dr. Mendel as well. He's an actual real doctor, by the way. So anybody who goes to Bible college, you need to check yourself. Because unless you have a stethoscope and a white coat around your neck, and can carry out medical surgery, you ain't a doctor, okay? Um, that's a Pharisee title from the Bible, right? Um, so, yeah, so, no, basically, um, yeah, Dr. Mendel, he does, he does um, particularly postural movements, Alexandrian technique. He does a, it's a lot of things like that. And um, the other one as well is I would recommend Dr. Sunil Dand. He's a chief internal medicine physician. So he really knows his stuff. Um, could even have a list of, like, uh, I'm going to do my own repent your sins, blacklists. Um, but we're also going to, uh, Stacey Schiffler, Keith Gomez, we're on there. Um, so we'll have, uh, well, maybe we'll have a health one as well or, or whatever. But um, anyway, um, I'm going to, uh, that's it for now. Um, uh, We'll, uh, we'll we'll come up with a list and all the rest of it in due course. Yeah. And, um, well, hopefully people enjoy this chat. I know I have. So uh, God bless and take care, everybody.